President Aquino has said that his government is working overtime to address human rights violations, and he's pleaded for patience in dealing with these cases. Yet despite a lot of promises of reform, his government really hasn't delivered in addressing impunity for serious human rights violations. Extrajudicial killings and disappearances of leftist activists continue, and the government has really failed to address involvement by security forces such as the police and the military. One of the commitments that the government made four years ago was to completely eliminate torture and extrajudicial killings and to intensify its efforts to carry out investigations and prosecutions and to punish the perpetrators responsible. So this was a commitment that was made at the last UTR in 2008. Now if we take the first part of that equation, if we look at the numbers of cases of killings and disappearances, I think we can say that there has been quite a serious reduction in the number of cases since 2008. But this reduction certainly already started to occur before President Aquino took office. It was really largely a result of the pressure from domestic organisations in the Philippines and international pressure. In any case, uh, the, the killings and disappearances have not stopped completely. They certainly continue. If we simply look at the statistics, there have only been four cases of extrajudicial killings that have been successfully prosecuted over the last four years. Now, this is despite the fact that hundreds of leftist activists, clergy, and journalists have been killed. The administration has clearly failed to send a message that the perpetrators of these killings will be held accountable. Four years ago, uh, I held a press conference here ahead of the first UPR of the Philippines, and actually I think Chell was there, and I made the statement that no member of the military active at the time of the killing had been held responsible for an extrajudicial killing. And unfortunately, four years later, we see exactly the same situation. So members of the military are still failing to be held to account for their role um, in these abuses. In the UPR report, the government talks at length about how it has created a various number of task forces, uh, national monitoring mechanisms, in order to address extrajudicial killings. Now this is a tactic that the Philippines has employed for years, which really serves to just deflect attention away from the actual uh, prosecutions themselves and progress in the cases. The Philippines government has been quite relentless in its, in its pursuit of task forces to address these killings. But if it was just as relentless in pursuing the perpetrators, then perhaps by now victims would be starting to see justice. One of the main failures in why we haven't seen successful prosecutions in these cases is the military's continued failure to cooperate with civilian authorities. And while the government's UPR report uh, makes a lot of statements about human rights trainings, particularly by the AFP, you know, you can conduct as many trainings as you want, but members of the military don't commit abuses because they don't know it's wrong. They commit abuses because they know they're going to get away with it. So the trainings will really only be effective if they're accompanied by strong prosecutions and people are held to account. The government's UPR report also highlights the role of the Human Rights Office in the military as an important element in combating human rights abuses. It talks about how that office monitors complaints, uh, receives them and instigates investigations. The report says that the Human Rights Office of the military acts on cases in accordance with the due process of law um, and the military justice system. Well, I mean, on this issue, I would say that the military has really been quite reluctant to share information about what are the outcomes of its investigations on specific cases. Instead, it is preferred to really play more of a PR kind of role for the military. For instance, just last week, um, you had a military spokesman claiming that there were zero cases of human rights violations in 2012. Now clearly, I don't think there's been enough time for him to actually investigate these allegations of human rights abuses. So I really think that the military should hold its fire, so to speak, in terms of claiming that there's been no human rights violations until it has undertaken the requisite investigations. In terms of the police, 
one of the failures has really been that the police fail to effectively investigate these cases. As soon as evidence points to the military, often the trail goes cold. They fail to interview key witnesses, um, and even in the few cases where arrest warrants have actually been executed, they fail to serve the arrest warrants. So, you know, people like Major General Palparam um, are able to still walk free. One agency that has shown a bit of leadership in trying to address some of these abuses certainly has been the Department of Justice. And there I would say we have seen progress um, in, a few, in a few cases in actually progressing to the point where people are being charged. But of course people being charged is only really the first part of the equation. Um, it, it's another matter to, to actually bring those people to trial. So firstly, if we talk about the, the Kadapan and Empeño case, which was of course the two UP female students who disappeared back in 2006. Now in December of last year, the Department of Justice finally uh, issued charges of kidnapping and illegal detention against several accused, including Major General Palpera. The problem is that despite the efforts of tracking teams, a bounty on his head, um, the the officials have basically not been able to move to actually arrest him. And we have been concerned that members of the military and business interests seem to be protecting uh, Palparan from being apprehended by the authorities. Even in the case of the two other co-accused, uh, the two other members of the military, and I believe that that trial is actually also starting today, right now, we've seen the long hand of the military extending in order to protect its own. So these two were actually transferred from the civilian jail to a military camp. And this again sort of reiterates the point that uh, Attorney Diopno was raising earlier, that even if people are being on trial, even in cases where members of the military have been convicted of human rights violations, in many cases they are being held in military camps, which in some cases isn't even detention. We really want to see the President sending a message from the top that these cases are prioritised by the government and that anyone who is obstructing these investigations or police investigators that are failing in their duty to investigate these cases thoroughly will also be held to account. And we simply haven't seen that kind of strong statement coming from the top. The Universal Periodic Review is really an important opportunity to hold the government to account, for the government to make new pledges to promote human rights and really to hold the government to its, work, to its word. So I hope that, you know, if I come back in four years' time for the third Universal Periodic Review, that we can actually be welcoming and encouraging what steps the Philippine government has made instead of lamenting the lack of progress. Thank you.